A Nazi official who refused to destroy a synagogue on Kristallnacht? It happened, and it happened here in Esslingen, which is located to the east of Stuttgart. You can see a bit of the film here in this video. Unfortunately, I was there at night, so you won't see as much of it as you would have done had I been there during the day. But I'm sure you'd agree that it's better than nothing. And if you think nothing's better, then you can stop watching now and watch something else instead. Esslingen am Neckar is a town of wonderful half-timbered buildings that take the visitor back to a different age. And that in itself will give you a clue as to why an attack on the synagogue would not have been a good idea. The synagogue in Esslingen is located at Hepaka 3 in the historical centre of the town. The Jewish community of the town bought a former tailor's guild house in 1819 and converted it into a synagogue, classroom and an apartment for use by whoever might need it. In 1889 to 1890, the house was renovated with the prayer room on the first floor receiving new furnishings and seating. Eugen Hund was the Nazi party official who saved the synagogue on Kristallnacht. He was born in Esslingen am Neckar on the 3rd of December 1901. His parents were poor, his mother worked as a laundress and he had to earn extra money just to pay his school fees. After attending secondary school, Hund trained as an industrial clerk. From 1924 to 1933, he was employed as a commercial employee at Maschinenfabrik Esslingen. Here's a picture of the plant from 1906. The company is best known for its production of railway locomotives and as from 1926, the Esslingen machine factory also manufactured electrically powered vehicles, mainly for Deutsche Reichsbahn. One of the other employees at the plant was Wilhelm Moore. In any study of National Socialism in Southwest Germany, the name of Wilhelm Moore will come up. Moore would later become Reich Governor of Württemberg. In 1925, as workmates, Moore introduced Hund to the National Socialist German Workers' Party. On the 6th of August 1925, Hund joined the Nazi party, membership number 12862, a very low membership number which later brought with it a lot of privileges. However, in the case of Hund, he was unsure of what he was doing. After a party meeting in the Stuttgart Liederhalle, Hund had second thoughts. He left the party and did not rejoin until 1930. However, his friend Wilhelm Moore did not forget him, and as he advanced through the Nazi party hierarchy, he took his former workmate Eugen Hund with him. In September 1930, Hund succeeded Moore as local group leader of the National Socialist Workers' Party in Esslingen. From December 1931 to mid-1933, he also sat up for the party on the Esslingen Municipal Council, where he led the three-member National Socialist German Par Workers' Party faction. In the spring of 1933, after National Socialists had seized power, Hund was appointed district leader of the party for the party district of Esslingen. By a decree of the Württemberg Ministry of the Interior on the 13th of September 1933, he was appointed acting mayor of Wendlingen, which was then in the district of Esslingen. As I have described in other videos, Kristallnacht was planned. The orders for it were directly given by Hitler, as is clearly proven by the diary of Joseph Goebbels, although the propaganda minister was one of those who helped organise the pogrom. In the case of Esslingen, the orders came from the Nazi party offices in Stuttgart, to Eugen Hund as district leader. The orders were to set fire to the synagogue. As you can see, Esslingen is made up of wooden buildings, as were many towns in Germany. The result of an arson attack on the synagogue is obvious. When given his orders to burn down the synagogue and the Jewish orphanage in Esslingen, Hund responded, don't try to fool me like that. As a result, the building was saved, but the interior was desecrated. What role Hund may have played in that, 
I don't know. However, it did mean that in Esslingen, unlike in Stuttgart, Ulm or Heilbronn, there was no destruction of the synagogue building. In 1942, Hund was transferred to the National Socialist German Workers' Party Party Office, the central control body for overseeing and supervising the Nazi party apparatus. With the rank of Reichshauptamtsleiter, he served as head of Department 2 of the party chancery, which was responsible for inspecting the political leadership of the party in German-occupied areas of Europe. In this role, he was sent to occupied Norway, and he stayed there for four months in 1943. After the war, Hund was subjected to tribunal proceedings and various criminal trials. At the synagogue trial before the Stuttgart Regional Court in 1951, Hund was acquitted because of his behaviour during these events. His last trial, in which he and Emil Weil were charged with breach of the peace before the Stuttgart Regional Court, ended on the 4th of September 1953 with an acquittal due to lack of evidence. That, of course, can happen when the witnesses are dead. Eugen Hund died in Stuttgart on the 12th of March 1975. The Jewish population of Esslingen was deported to camps mainly Riga and Theresienstadt and from there to Maui Trostenitz or Auschwitz where nearly all of them perished. Here are a handful of the victims from Esslingen. There are of course many, many more. Abraham Schweitzer, born the 3rd of February 1875, was arrested on Kristallnacht in Esslingen and sent to Dachau. He was released from there, but in 1941 forced to live in Oberdorf am Ipf. In 1942 he was deported to Theresienstadt, and on the 29th of September of that year he was sent to either Treblinka or Maui Protostinets. This plaque in the ground, called a stumbling block in German, recalls where he lived in Esslingen. It's placed outside his former home. Bertold Oppenheimer, born in 1895, was the last head of the Jewish community in Esslingen. In 1938, he was imprisoned in the Dachau concentration camp for a month. He was released, but in November 1941, he was picked up from his apartment with his wife Martha and their son Martin. They were deported from Stuttgart to Riga, where they were all murdered. Julie Liebel was born in 1889 and her husband Victor in 1885. They were deported to Izbica in Poland and disappeared after September 1942. They were probably murdered in Bełżec. Ter Kaufmann was born in 1923 and deported to Riga on 1st of December 1941. She managed to survive three years. Due to the Red Army advance, in the autumn of 1944, the camp was evacuated to Stutthof concentration camp, shown here. She died in Stutthof in either 1944 or 1945. Stutthof was liberated at the very end of the war. Theodor Rothschild was born in 1878. He was the head of the Jewish orphanage in Esslingen. He perished in Theresienstadt in 1944, aged around 66. Jette Lowenthal, near Wertheimer, was born on the 22nd of August 1873. She was deported to Theresienstadt on the 22nd of August 1942, her 69th birthday, and she perished the following year. Rosalie Oppenheimer, near Lowenthal, was born the 8th of December 1870. She was deported to Theresienstadt and from there to Maui Trostenitz, aged 71. Josef Leon Staropolsky was the kosher butcher in Esslingen. He was born on the 19th of November 1855. He perished on the 18th of September 1942 in Theresienstadt, two months short of his 87th birthday. As you can see, Eugen Hund managed to save the synagogue, but only to stop other buildings burning down with it. He was unable or unwilling to do anything to save the people. 
Following the liberation of this part of Germany, the Americans set up a synagogue in the very same building in July 1945. However, few Jewish people returned. In April 1946, the building was converted to residential use and as a daycare centre. From 1949 to 1986, it was the home of the Esslingen District Youth Association, called the Jugendhaus Stadtmitte. Afterwards, there was a private gallery, Galerie im Hepaka, in this building. On the 18th of March 2012, it was returned to use as a synagogue, most congregants being German-speaking people from the former Soviet Union. Thank you very much for listening to this video. I upload every Friday at 20 hundred hours my time. I'm based in Poland and Germany and the Holocaust is my specialist subject in history. I sometimes upload on other days as well, particularly on anniversaries. If you'd like to know when I upload a video or do a live broadcast, then you might like to subscribe. In the meantime, you might like to have a look at a live broadcast I did when I read the diary of Goebbels, which deals with Kristallnacht and shows quite conclusively how the decision to launch the pogrom was made and who carried out the initial attacks in Munich. The link appears here. For the moment, thanks for listening. Bye for now.